Today, we're going to be installing this. This is a MOSFET. Uh, it helps manage the power for our ANET A8 3D printer. Now, before we begin, I'm not an electrician, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing, but if you don't feel comfortable with this, get some help. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad if you were able to hook up the wires to your machine. Uh, should be able to do this without a problem, but be safe, okay? Do your own research. Uh, there have been plenty of documented cases where the original power supply with the machine is causing problems uh, because it comes straight to the board and then the board sends the power out to the extruder and hotbed and there have been quite a few cases where things have melted, even caught fire. Either these connections here at the main board or the white connector at the hotbed. So this helps alleviate some of that strain and makes it way safer. I can't say that it's 100% safe, nothing is, but it will help a lot. It will help a lot. So the idea is from the power supply, you will bring the wires, instead of coming in to the board directly, it will come in here first. So you see it's marked DC in. Uh, polarity does matter, so you have to pay attention to the plus and minus then it will leave here too so you'll have a wire leaving here and that will then go into the board and again the polarity matters so pay attention to the plus and minus you will start a new set of wires here where it says hotbed um, the polarity doesn't matter here so you know you can reuse the red and black wires that are already going to the hotbed and plug them in here the, I think it's blue and gray that come from the hotbed, they will still plug in up here on the board. The one with the little white JST connection, okay? Which leaves us with this last spot, which is also a JST connection, but that will connect to this little terminal that says bed. So you need a set of wires coming from bed to this one, polarity does not matter on that one as far as I could tell either. Alright, hold on a second. <laughs> this, this is giving me a headache. Diagram that I showed you, it says that with the color coding that the polarity does not matter. But then, if you scroll down the page a little bit, there's a few bullet points and it says polarity does matter which the whole thing is just contradicting itself. Then I went on the forums, and it seems like everyone ordered these at the same time, and this question came up more than once, and I saw some people say polarity does matter, and I saw plenty of people that says it does not. From what I can tell, it just sends a signal, and it does not with the way that I'm showing you I hooked it up. Uh, spoiler alert, it works fine. But I could have just gotten lucky and got the polarity correct on the first try. But I kind of get it because there's an LED. Again, I'm not an electrician, but there's an LED on the bed. And I think that only the, the polarity does matter to make that work. And it does come on on mine. So I don't know. Do your own research. Make sure you have it right. But it works like this. And the wires don't have to be real big and beefy for this one because it's just sending a signal now. Um, so yeah, real quick, power in and then power to the board, hotbed wires to the hotbed, and then from the bed connection on the board to here. And you should be okay. I will definitely put a diagram up for you or a link in the description in case you want to do some more research on your own. Now, that's with one power supply. I'm going to do mine a little differently. I went ahead out and got this. It was only like 20 bucks at Micro Center. Um, so I'm going to be running two power supplies. I'm going to use the old one for the hotbed and then the new one is going to power the board and some LED lights that are in my cabinet that I made. So. so. That means my setup's going to be a little bit different 
than a single power supply uh, setup. So just like before, the old power supply is going to come here and then the red and black wires are going to go to the bed. That's the same. The difference here is I'm not going to have a set of wires coming off of here going to the main board. Okay, I will still need the bed to come to the little white JST. What will be different is instead of that set of wires coming to the board, I'll just have my second power supply with some 12 volt uh, power coming and powering up the board itself. So the old power supply will basically just be running the hotbed. So uh, you could do it either way. Uh, and either way, this will make it safer. Uh, even if you have this, like I, it's, you only use the old power supply to do everything, it, it will be better as long as you hook everything up correctly. So let's get to it. So here's what I am doing to my connections that uh, go to the screws. I have these little spade terminals. Uh, they're crimped on, then I put a little bit of solder in there, and then heat shrinked it. So you can just use bare wire and crimp it on in there. This is just another, another step for a little bit of safety. I think I have the MOSFET all settled. Uh, there you can see the four wires are going to their respective places. And then this little JST connection, uh, if we follow that up, that is going into this first one here. This I didn't change at all because that's the extruder. I have this one popped up because I'm going to connect that to my PSU next. So, um, this and this to the hotbed, this and this to the power supply, making sure that positive is positive and negative is negative. Okay, the next step is to get this power supply working. Again, you don't need a second power supply. You could totally do this with the one that's provided, uh, just hooking it up a little differently, like I said earlier, but um, I'm going to use this one. Um, it's meant for a computer, but of course we're not putting it in a computer, so we have to kind of trick it to think that we are. To do that, we have to do a uh, little hacking, I guess, hardware hacking. Um, you'll find this main cable with this big giant, I don't even know what these are called, um, and then you have the whole gangly mess later on. So these are the main wires, and then these are all your 5 volt, 3 volt, 12 volt wires. There is one green wire which I hope is green. I'm colorblind and no one's home to help me, but I think that's the green one. And what I have done, you have to short that with any ground, which is any black wire. So before I actually cut these and twist them together, maybe solder them together, uh, I just ran a wire in between these two posts. So I found the hole that the green one connects to and I stuck a wire in there. And then I found a black wire and I stuck a wire in there. And hopefully when I click the switch to turn on the power supply it will come on. I'll know because the fan will start going. Some of the older power supplies, um, I guess if you don't have a load, so something hooked up to it that uses electricity, if you don't have that and you do this, uh, it won't come on. So you'd have to have something hooked up to it, whether it's the LED lights or, I mean, if you're talking about a computer, a CD, DVD player or something. So, uh, anyway, I got it hooked up. Let's try it. Oh, I must have found green. So, it works. Fan's on. That should be all good then. Um, I'm going to test a couple of these with a multimeter and make sure that I'm getting 12 volts out of these sockets. And then, uh, yeah, I'll cut this wire and connect the green and a black, and then we'll be able to hook up the main board to it. So I have the power supply on. Uh, I have my really cheap Harbor Freight. I think I got it free with purchase multimeter. Um, ground is ground, so black is ground. The black wires on here. Yellow wires are 12 volt. Red wires are 5 volt. So I'm gonna test it. There we go. We got 12 volts there. Uh, I'll move it over to this one. 
and we're going to test the 5 volt rail and there I got 5 volts so um, yeah yellow is what so I'll snip one of these yellows actually I think I have a connector but I'll run the yellow and black over to the main board and that's what I'll use for the LEDs too. The LEDs I have need 12 volts, so they'll also be using the yellow wires. But you could use that 5 volt to, I don't know, hook up a, some kind of charger thing. Charge your Raspberry Pi, not charge, but power your Raspberry Pi maybe. Um, we'll see. But good, looks like it's working. So I have my MOSFET done. My connections are done to my, power, my second power supply. Uh, I just electrical tape them to see if they work. Uh, I'm still going to put this into my cabinet so I'll make more permanent connections and solder those later on. Uh, but we can test and see how things go. So let's put that there. The first thing I'm going to do is plug in the old so power supply, the one that comes with the unit. Oh, that's I got a light coming on on the MOSFET so I hope that's good. And then, while you're watching, I'm going to go around and turn on the second power supply. Hey, it came on! Blower's going? That's a good sign. Printer ready. So, it's probably hard to see with the glare, but it came right on. Now... Let's see if we can maybe get it to heat up. Groot and this guy need to move. Let's go menu. Quick settings. We'll just do preheat PLA. Let's see what happens. Hopefully there's no smoke. Hey! So... I got the LED light to come on the bed. Now I got a blue light going on my MOSFET. And nothing's on fire. So let's go back to the main screen here. And you can see that. My bed is going up as well as my nozzle. So they're both working. Nothing's on fire. I'm gonna call that a success. If this video was helpful to you at all, please like or subscribe. I appreciate it. Uh, if you wanna make fun of my electrical skills, please feel free to do so in the comments.